Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surf tip is how to custom order your groveler. Now, I want to identify the category. I'm talking about the wider nose hybrid outline boards. They usually come in a shorter package. They're really made for one to three foot mushy waves. And you guys ask me all the time, if I custom order this board, how wide can I go? How thick or how long can I stretch it out to before the board starts to lose its design and purpose for maximum performance? Now I hooked up with Britt Merrick, talking to him about your guys' questions, and he's gonna help us look at the stock dimensions, give us a general rule of thumb so we don't make mistakes. You guys are gonna love this, check it out. So Britt, stoked to have you on the show. Thanks man, stoked to be here. Yeah, so. Or to have you here. Right? You're at my place. Yeah, we're at your hood. I've been answering a ton of questions and I get the gist of ordering customs and I, I feel like some of the most important things is trying to help out the surf community make a solid decision when they're ordering custom. Yeah. Right. And the question often for me is let's talk about a hybrid or a groveler for that matter. We'll start there. And I, f I feel like the, I, to identify this category the Ultra Joe is a great example of that, where it has like this hybrid nose here. It's a little bit wider. They come stock quite a bit shorter. So if, I, if I'm if i 5'9 and my high performance shortboard, I like around 5'9 or shorter. I feel like these hybrids are coming in at like 5'3 stock dimensions. And for guys like yourself that are tall, Mm -hmm. And even if they're super thin, the, the, one of the major questions is on the hybrid is, is it okay for me to be 6'2 and riding a 5'3 or 5'4? Right. And if I were to order a custom, could I stretch that out? And if I were to stretch it out, how do I stretch that out and get it right for me in a custom dimension without wrecking the design of the board? Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah, there's a lot there. I mean, <clears throat> you know... Every surfer is different, which is part of the, the cool thing, you know, and we provide as, as a company, we provide stock dimensions for people, which are just a guideline to try to hit um, most of the market, most people, you know sure. what I mean? So people shouldn't get hung up on stock dims. We're not saying when we give stock dims, this is the way you have to ride the board. Right. We just have to provide shops and outlets with a range that they could sell to most people. Sure. But a lot of us aren't most people. I'm not most people, right? right? I'm very oddly sized. I'm 6'6 six, six right. and pretty thin. So I've never ridden a stock dimension in my life. I don't even pay attention to them sure. other than setting them up for shops and stuff. So I'm always trying to determine what board am I most comfortable on? What's my size range? And for 6.6, six, I ride pretty small boards. You know, I ride 6.2s and 6.4s. Right. And only this year did I start riding 6.4s. Uh, previous years, I was 6.0s and 6.2s, but now I just turned 49. So I'm moving up a oh, bit. No. I'm moving up a bit. I'm getting a bit bigger. But, but still, you know, a, a 6.4 short board for a 6.6 six, six guy is yeah. not that big. But what I find is I've got to dial it in for my size, my ability, and how hard I want to work. Right. That's what really changed for me this last year was the, the, how hard I was willing to work. And I went up in size and leaders because I was just working too hard at Rincon to catch waves. You right. know what I mean? I was like exhausted after an hour session. And it finally dawned on me, why am I doing this? And now I'm much more comfortable. I feel more confident. I'm catching more waves, much to the chagrin of many. <laughs> and uh, and I, I'm, I'm having more fun because I'm not working as hard. So. Every surfer's got to figure out, so what's that fine line for me, right. right? Because if you're under-volumed, you're working too hard. And here's what happens if you're over-volumed, now the board loses all its sensitivity. Right. So now you're not having fun, it's a dangerous situation because you can't control your board. So where is that sweet spot in right. there? And I think a good place to start for this kind of board, a hybrid or a groveler board, is two to four inches shorter than your short board. Mm. That's gonna work for most people right. in most situations. Two to four inches shorter than your short board. Now, two to four inches is a big range, but again, what's your level of comfortability? Right. How hard do you wanna work, right? Versus how many waves do you wanna catch? How sensitive do you want your board to be versus just being able to catch waves? 
Um, so that's really a personal matter. And I, I don't want people to get stuck on stock dims. I want them to really think that through. Okay. And, and figure out what that sweet spot is for them. So let's think it through. Yeah. Let's take a stock dimension board and say, if it's, let's say it's 5'3", and it's roughly 19 inches wide, these are stock dimensions, and let's say two and five sixteenths, and it's hitting at 26 liters, and I like my, my grovelers at like, let's say 27. So I'm gonna get on the CI website, and I love the site that I can type in different widths and different thicknesses, and it gives me my liter. It'll spit it out right then and there, which is epic. But what would happen on the design, if I went too wide, what are some of the characteristics of the board messing up the design? If I took it from like 19 and let's say 19 wide was the stock and I went to 20 or 20 yeah. and a quarter and right. I still kept it 5'4", what's yeah. this board gonna do? What can you expect out of it? Well, in that scenario, you're gonna really change the outline of the board, right? Which is a huge, probably the, the second most important component of a board after rocker is the outline mm -hmm. and the way that it performs. So if you start going too wide, now you're adding a lot of curve. If you're keeping the same length and you go wider, you can visualize it you know, dimensionally, now you're adding a lot of curve to the outline. Mm -hmm. And on a board like this, the Ultra Joe, um, you want a straighter outline. That's mm. part of the reason for the rounder nose, mm. right? You don't have to pull in the outline so much. Mm. So a straighter outline works the same way the straighter rocker does, right? Right. It's got more natural down the line speed, more flow, right. without having to work it so sure. hard. Um, so that's what you start losing then. You're going to start losing the characteristic of the board that makes it easy to ride and fast and quick down the line because now you've got so much curve in the outline. Right. That's really changed the function. Okay, so if I wanted to go longer on a custom Ultra Joe, for example, I might not want to mess with the width as much as I want to add maybe a, an inch or two in length to get my volume and maybe mess with a little bit of the thickness then, is what you're saying? Well, <clears throat> I think incremental changes are fine. And here's where I think the stock dimensions are probably helpful. What we make sure when we present stock dimensions is that the correct dimensionality, right, proportionality of that board stays put. Mm -hmm. So we're going up in width and thickness incrementally as we go up correct. in length. Right. So that's where you can use those as a guide. Yeah. You don't want to just willy-nilly it like, okay, I'm going to go up, you know, six inches, but keep it the same width. Right. Now you've changed the board again. Now the board is too straight in the outline. Right. Now right? We'll, it'll struggle getting in the lip and getting in vertical tight spots. Right? Yeah. It's going to feel like you're surfing a two by four. There's right. just right. No, no curve in the outline. Right. So that's where when people are designing their, their custom dimensions, I think the stock dimensions are helpful because it gives you a sense of the incremental changes. Sure. Now you can go outside of those parameters a bit. Within reason. Within reason. But you know, a half inch is a lot. Right. on a board when we're talking width. Yeah, yeah. And a quarter inch is a ton when we're talking thickness. Right. So once you start look out, looking outside of a half inch width and a quarter inch thickness and what you're gonna change, you really gotta think about what you're doing there. Okay, so that, that's good. So you're giving, I feel like you're giving us a general rule of thumb. And I think that's what I'm looking at here. If we look at a stock, look at the stock dimensions, somebody's found something that's close to what they wanna ride. Yeah. We would say, let's not go wider than a half inch from the stock guidelines right. on a board like this or for most boards and for that matter. And then let's not go more than an eighth thicker than what you would see on that stock dimensions that's close to what you would ride. Yeah, yeah. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, I, and I think that you'll, you'll, you'll be able to hit the leaders that you're looking for, you know, with those incremental movements. Right, whether you're adding one inch in length that's going to over and you make it maybe a 16th inch wider mm -hmm. and then maybe a 16 inch, inch thicker excuse me then you've really changed the volume yeah. but we didn't change the shape that much yeah we didn't change the design significantly right yeah and that's, that's what you want to do you want to you want to stay true to the design and define or find excuse me your dimensionality right so let's talk about okay there's guys like yourself at six six let's say 215, 220, or 200 pounds, maybe a board like this just doesn't fit in the range for you at all. Yeah, you know, it's a weird thing when you're, when you're my size, you, you have to ride smaller boards because I'm generally surfing small waves and a bigger board is just not gonna fit in the wave, right? Right. So 
I'm six six. I, I can't ride a six eight short board. Right. At Rincon, it's just not going to fit in the curve of the way. Sure, sure. So I'm riding six fours and six twos. In the Ultra Joe, I ride a six zero. Oh, okay. Right. That's right. and that's within that two to four inches shorter than your shortboard range. If Good my shortboard's a six four, right. I go six zero. Oh, I'm still in there. Right. And I find that it works great at six zero. Oh. That helps a lot. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of people in our community with ordering their hybrids and grovelers. So the next thing is our next episode, we want to do step downs is what you guys call it, or maybe a small wave high performance board. Yeah. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's surf tip. Remember we're talking about grovelers with that hybrid outline and it really doesn't matter who the board builder is. If they give us stock dimensions, we should be able to apply the general rule of thumb that Britt helped us with. Look, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Special shout out thanks to Britt Merrick for helping us in this episode. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.